So the third exercise we're going to do today is looking at profit. You've done some work to address the process you're going to go through to look at the uncertainties. You've done some work before that to look at who your customer is. Uh, in the profit segment, what we're going to do is tie that all together to say, what does the business look like? In any presentation, by the end, the investor wants to know, so, okay, I've got all of these pieces. They seem to make sense. What does it mean for the overall business? What founders will often do is they'll put together a spreadsheet or a financial projection that goes through in detail what the revenue is going to be, what the different line items of cost are going to be, when things are going to come in. Sometimes they'll go in and say, here's the number of people we're going to hire in month six and then month 10 and so on and work it through. Some investors like that. Other investors don't pay any attention to those kinds of spreadsheets because they know that at the beginning, at the stage that you're at right now, it's really hard to know what things are going to happen and what expenses you're going to have three or four years out, what your revenue is going to be three or four years out. So why put together a spreadsheet or any kind of a financial projection or a profit projection at all? And there are three big things that you're conveying when you do that, or three big questions that you have to answer. The first one is, how big is this opportunity? What's your aspiration? Is this worth pursuing? And the same business might have completely different points five years out. So imagine that you are doing a vegetarian restaurant in Cambridge. One view would be that five years from now, you might have three or four branches of it, and the business might be four or five million dollars making a certain amount of money. It's a good business, but that's not a good business for a venture capitalist. A different version of a very similar business would be I set up a vegetarian restaurant. Uh, what I'm going to do is have great food, but my aim is to change the trajectory of global warming, and I'm going to create a thousand units of this within five years. That is a business that's interesting for a venture capital firm. The way you build each of these two businesses is completely different. The kind of investor you get is different. And so the first thing we want to do is to look at what is the aspirational opportunity that you have for this. So in this activity, what we're going to do is take the first step of the profit exercise and have you take a look at how big is the opportunity that you're pursuing. What's important here is that you look out, say, five years and say, I think that this opportunity can be of this size. Once you do that, you then have to find a justification for someone who really doesn't know that much about your market or your business. And that can be top down. It could be that this many users, this many hair salons, this many children who brush their teeth, whatever the, the metric is. And we expect to get a share of 5% or 10% of that market by this period. Or it can be bottom up that we're going to start to build out restaurants, you know, three per city, and we're going to capture this many cities in this period of time. The key to it is that what you want is a market that is big enough to attract the kind of investor that you want. You want to show in this that you have an opportunity that's of that size, and you want to show it to somebody who knows nothing about your business. So the exercise is going to be put together the opportunity size, put together your reasons and your logic for why this is so, and try and convince the person that you're partnering with that this is a feasible venture and that your logic for the size of the opportunity makes sense. 